China is the largest emitter of carbon dioxide in the world and the largest consumer of coal by far. So figuring out how to keep using the fossil fuel while releasing less CO2 is important there. I traveled to China last year with the Jackson Hole Center for Global Affairs. The Wyoming group has been working to encourage collaboration on low carbon technology for over a decade. And we're doing it because we share a common challenge, and that's the challenge of global climate change. It was a week full of meetings with local government agencies, tours like this one of a state-of-the-art coal-fired power plant, and a global meeting on carbon. It all took place in coal-rich Shanxi province. We in Wyoming and the people in this province, in China, Shaanxi province, have a particularly acute challenge. Because Wyoming produces more coal than any other U.S. state, and Shanxi is one of the top producers in China. Taken together in 2014, the regions produce more than 1.3 billion tons of coal. That's a lot of coal. That's a lot of carbon emissions. On this day, we visited a demonstration facility that turns coal into liquids like diesel and ammonia. But it's more liquefaction. The vast energy campus, shown in intricate detail in this model, is essentially an experiment in what you can make from coal and how best to do it. Because turning coal into products generally requires a lot of energy and can be very polluting. Our translator told me that they're experimenting with recycling wastewater and using CO2 in-house rather than emitting it into the atmosphere. Whatever works here and is cost effective will likely get incorporated into a much larger yet to be built commercial venture. It's quite an in incredible uh, uh, demonstration facility and I've not seen anything like this uh, anywhere. Wyoming is also tackling the issue in part with a $15 million investment in a yet-to-be-built carbon testing lab. I can't wait to see what great minds come up with to reimagine CO2. The Integrated Test Center, ITC for short, will be a space for researchers to come up with commercial uses for CO2 generated by coal-fired power plants. For energy-rich regions, this is all part of a technological holy grail of reducing emissions while keeping the coal industry alive. It's called carbon capture, utilization, and storage. That's the technology that needs to be put on steroids because we're running out of time. Carbon capture technology can remove emissions right out of a power plant's smokestack. The CO2 can then be stored underground or in some cases used to make carbon-based products. The whole suite of technologies taken together is referred to as CCUS. In a joint statement issued during a meeting in September between President Obama and China's President Xi Jinping, the two countries announced a site for a joint CCUS project. According to the Global CCS Institute, a group that advocates for this technology, there are 15 large-scale CCS projects in operation around the world and seven more under construction. But one serious barrier to attaching CCS to a power plant? Cost. The Boundary Dam Carbon Capture Project in Saskatchewan, Canada, for example, cost around one billion U.S. dollars and has faced serious delays and operating issues. We need to spend a lot of money and it's going to take a lot of time, but we don't have that kind of time. Much of the world will likely continue to rely heavily on coal for quite some time. Although we're using less and less of it here at home, the Energy Information Administration predicts that in 2030, coal will still provide around 25 percent of our electricity, down from 40 percent today. And we can't keep talking about it as if we can simply go to something else. Now, maybe we have the luxury to do that in the United States, but China doesn't have the luxury to do that. I don't think China has the intention of doing that. Uh, those who are serious about climate change have to be serious about the technology that needs to be developed to c capture CO2 from the use of coal. But not everyone agrees. Connie Wilbert is a lifelong Wyoming resident, outdoor enthusiast, and the director of the Sierra Club's Wyoming chapter. Basically, there is no such thing as clean coal. Talking about clean coal is like talking about healthy tobacco. It doesn't exist. But carbon capture does. It's just that the way Wilbert and others see it, developing the technology isn't worth the cost. We think that we would be way better off to be looking for other solutions to help 
Wyoming and the rest of the country transition to clean, renewable energy sources. But renewables don't generate revenue in the same way as fossil fuels. In 2016, coal, oil and gas together are projected to account for around 70 percent of Wyoming's budget. Uh, Wyoming is facing really, really big challenges and it's going to be a very difficult transition. That said, we absolutely believe that we we don't have a choice. We have to move away from fossil fuels. But moving away from fossil fuels is exactly what so many in Wyoming are hoping does not happen. And in Representative Dave Miller's view, there is only one way that Wyoming coal can recover, and it's not through technological innovation. The one way, he says... Is an administration change. Uh, if, if we get a, uh, a the different party in the White House, I think we could have a turnaround in three or four years, and maybe coal production will stabilize. I don't know if it'll get back to where we were a few years ago, but I think it'll at least stabilize and possibly go back up.